Okay, so I have tested a little bit more now and it seems to run quite stable. I haven't had any issues since I installed that little bodge wire from the capacitor. Not really sure at all if that has anything to do with that, but now it's been working every time I test it. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Not only did they provide the excellent PCB for this project, but they also provided the 3D print for the case of the 1581. And yes, they actually do 3D printing services as well. And as you can see, this is a very good quality 3D print. More on this 3D print later in this video. And of course, PCBWay is my favorite the PCB manufacturer. Not only do they provide prototypes PCBs for reasonable prices and with uh, quite amazing shipping times, they can also provide you with other hobbyist needs like uh, advanced PCBs, PCB assembly, SMD stencil, CNC machining and 3D printing and various other products and capabilities. So go ahead and visit pcbway.com to check out their services. Now back to the video. So I was thinking a little about how do we copy stuff. If you have a 1581 floppy disk drive and you have no 1581 floppy disks, but you have downloaded a lot of uh, floppy disk images online, how do you actually get them out to a real floppy disk? And uh, yeah, obviously there's uh, several different options to do that. Uh, you have of course devices like this. This is the Pi 1541 and this actually supports uh, 1581 or D81 floppy disk images. So you could just connect the cable from this through the 1581 drive and then to your Commodore and then you can mount up a D81 disk image for example on this one and simply copy the whole um, disk to a real floppy. But then before you do that, you need to load from this or this <laughs> a copier program that supports uh, 1581 <laughs> disk copy. I haven't really tested that yet, but um, that's something you could do. Or if you have a 1541 floppy disk drive, you can also daisy chain that uh, with your 1581 instead and uh, start a copier program from that if you have something on a floppy disk. You can also use a uh, cartridge like the Kung Fu Flash. I have placed a lot of 1581 uh, disk images like the 1581 demo and you could of course just um, mount that and then yeah you can uh, <laughs> now you can could run a disk copier program from the 1581 if you want to or if you load it from the Kung Fu Flash and then mount uh, the D81 image you want to copy you can copy uh, all the files over I'm not really sure if that supports a full track based copy or if it's just file based I haven't really tried that out either so can't really say for sure Anyway, so this is uh, the 1581 utility disk and here's a lot of uh, programs to test a 1581 drive. <laughs> so now I'm loading a program called file copy. And uh, now um, the Kung Fu Flash is drive 8, but I have configured my um, 1581 to device number 9. So source disk is 8 and destination is 9. 
this is a little bit uh, awkward program. You have to select all the files you want to copy. So <laughs> yeah, it's just for demonstration. There's a lot of other more professionally made copier programs. This is just for testing and yeah, it seems to be working. It's copying away, but it's very slow. <laughs> But I was thinking if you're gonna use a Commodore machine as your copier machine then there's a lot of setup and you need a lot of cables and stuff and uh, you need to find a C64 copier program and yeah it could be difficult. So I'm gonna try out this method instead. This is a, a little device called the XUM1541 and uh, it's made by TEBL and uh, you can find this on uh, GitHub. I actually tested it before on a 1541 and it worked and this makes it possible to use a Commodore floppy disk drive on a regular PC or Macintosh without a need for a Commodore machine at all. And this one actually uses a little microcontroller so you need that as well and then you just hook it up and then you hook uh, the microcontroller to your PC via USB. Okay, let's see if I can show you this. So I connected up the device, um, yeah. And I have programmed the little Arduino Pro Micro that you need for this. It was uh, quite easy. Uh, I'm not gonna go into all the details on how to, to make this work, but the thing is um, you need some software on the computer. This is a Windows 10 machine. And I use the OpenCBM software. I have connected the drive now to this little device via the USB micro connector to the computer. And while the 1581 is <laughs> on my C64, it's not connected to it at, at all. It's directly from the drive to the Windows machine. And the OpenCBM is a command line utility. Uh, I think there are some uh, graphical user interfaces that uses it, but I'm using the command. So for example, if I want to format a disk, I can use this command. Yeah, so now it just sent that command to the floppy drive and it started with the formatting. And then when the formatting completed, you can, for example, take a look at the directory with the dir command which is now obviously empty, so there's nothing there. So I uh, actually struggled a little bit with uh, finding a way to uh, copy a complete uh, D81 uh, image to the drive. And in fact, uh, I think the documentation says that it wasn't supported, but uh, I could copy single files at least. But I'm not gonna use any more time onto that, not in this video, so let's continue. All right, so I got this uh, Samsung SFD 321B floppy disk drive. Uh, I actually wanted to use this uh, into this project. Um, this is made for uh, PC, so you can't use it directly. Um, you need that adapter, which I told you about to use it. And uh, I started soldering is this up uh, <laughs> with a plan of uh, <laughs> actually using it. Uh, you need a 74HCT02 uh, chip there, a little capacitor and uh, yeah, just a contact and on the, this side you connect the floppy disk drive and this one goes down there. Unfortunately, <laughs> I don't have uh, such a solder on connector. I, uh, it's gonna look like this. However, this is for making a cable, so this can't be used. I don't have such a contact where you can solder it in a true hole like this. And if I'm gonna build this, then I have to order one and that's gonna delay this video by uh, two weeks at least. I don't have time for that. However, as it turns out, this drive too can be modified uh, to operate as an Amiga drive. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do next. So this should be quite easy, in fact, on this drive. Yeah, it's a used drive, so it uh, needs a little bit of uh, cleaning, I guess. Okay, there's a lot of uh, dust bunnies there. <laughs> 
So I'm just going to clean this up a little bit and uh, then we'll see how to um, proceed with uh, the modification. Now the reason this drive is so easy to modify is because uh, it already has a few jumpers and things that makes it uh, easier. It, it is actually built for both modes, PC and or Amiga. And uh, yeah, this is one of many guides that you can find online on how to uh, modify it. And uh, not going to go into very detail here, but um, point one says remove jumper from DC and move the jumper to ready. Point two, make sure the in-use NHDD jumpers are disconnected and there's a pad marked for that. Point four, set unit from DS1 to DS0 by soldering this jumper. And yeah, there's a zoom view of the final result. So everything we need to do is down here in this area. So point one said, uh, move this jumper from DC to ready. So we're gonna desolder this jumper and place it over there. And this is a zero ohm resistor. Just gonna use a little bit flux here to make it easier. So these are quite small uh, SMD components, but uh, not the smallest one. And you could of course use um, some hot air or something to desolder this. I'm just gonna try and uh, remove the solder on both sides. I just forgot I have this small <laughs> solder iron <laughs> that just runs on a 5 volt um, DC. I'm gonna use that instead and I can use two irons. Yeah. So just move it over there and then just solder it in. Just a little bit of solder. Uh, there were actually a little bit of solder from before. Yeah, I think that's good. Then point two was this um, jumper there should be cleared. All of those four uh, jumper points there should be clear. Just gonna use a little bit of solder wick and make sure I'm not gonna remove anything else. Yeah, it's sucking it away. clear clean yeah, I'm just gonna use a multimeter and check that uh, those are disconnected now the third thing is to install a wire from DC uh, over to pin 2 which is here or you have uh, possibilities to solder it in here so if you check continuity from pin 2 to that uh, blob there there's continuity so Instead of soldering it there, which is more difficult, we can solder from there to there. Here's a small wire. Yeah, that's solid. So we're gonna go there. Finally, we're gonna move this uh, solder jumper from DS1 to DS0. That, but I need to make sure that it's yeah, not covering both. Yeah, nah, that didn't work. I'm gonna just remove the whole um, solder tin there. Kind of old and uh, crusty anyway, probably. Then a little blob on the S0 pad. All right, that was a quick and easy modification. Uh, we made a PC drive uh, now appear as an Amiga drive. And uh, yeah, just gonna see if it works. Yes. And again, double check that we have uh, the correct voltage, uh, that we don't accidentally send 12 volts to the 5 volts input, but uh, these connectors are keyed and standard, so yeah. And I can, I think it says 5 volts on that side, so that's yellow. 
So I turned it on and it actually spins and uh, it uh, initialized obviously. All right, let's see now. I'm gonna try to run the directory command and load dollar comma eight. Let's see that. Yeah, it loads it. All right. Yeah, so this works. Look at that. Yes. So that's the disk I formatted on the other drive and uh, yeah, it works fine here. Let's uh, save just to test something. Save the directory listing. Yeah, it spins. Load the directory again. Yeah, nice. Inserting another disk and the problem was that if you try to load the directory now it would uh, load the one from the previous because it's already in memory and uh, wouldn't load the, from the new disk. Yeah, and that's the case here. Hmm. So uh, yeah, that actually needs to be fixed. I'm now using the first drive, the Panasonic, and I have one disk inside. It's another disk I formatted and named it Test2. And I'm now using my Commodore 128 because it's much easier to write the disk commands in basic V7. You have the directory command on F3. Yeah, so there's disk2 in the directory and now I'm swapping to the other disk, which should be called uh, 1581 disk and uh, let's just run the directory yeah and it reads it fine so no issues with uh, detecting uh, disk swapping print ds1 it says okay yeah so so with this drive apparently now everything works fine so uh, since the uh, disk swap Detection doesn't work on the Samsung drive. I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use this Panasonic. Only thing it's a little bit more noisier. So if I figure out why the disk swapping um, detection doesn't work, I might change my mind. But uh, for now, I'm going with this one. Also something that's quite much easier on the 128 is uh, you can use the header command instead of that uh, cryptic format command. You just need a, a ID. Are you sure? Yes. So that's the formatting command. Well, that didn't work. Uh, it just ended uh, right away. And if I try the directory command now, <laughs> it's just a garbage. Uh, sometimes it shows something, sometimes not. <laughs> Let's try the header command again. Yeah, now it formats. So yeah, while it is working uh, for the most part, there is uh, sometimes some um, issues with this. I'm not really sure if that is uh, a problem with the 1581 drive or it's due to bugs or some uh, compatibility issues with uh, the machine. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll just have to live with that. I mean, maybe there were issues with the original 1581 as well, sometimes. Now let's try the directory. Yeah, now it shows correctly and we can check the status, DS1. It's okay. So if we have DS1, do we have something on DS0? Yeah, it's the same. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I've been playing around now with this for a long time, both on 128 and C64 mode and yeah, seems to be very stable and just working fine. So yeah, works fine. I'm pleased with that. All right, a little change of plans. I actually decided to use uh, the new Samsung drive after all. I actually fixed the issue with uh, detecting uh, the floppy disk change and yeah, <laughs> I did a mistake. Connecting that little wire to the disk change uh, signal was uh, connected on the wrong pad. I didn't film this, but uh, here you can see a picture. So I just moved uh, the wire to uh, the other pad and then it uh, worked. So um, 
I'm happy with that. Also check the capacitor. There's one electrolyte on this one, uh, <laughs> which I could see at least, and uh, it was uh, perfectly good. So here you can see, first I listed the directory on one of the floppies, and then I switched it and the directory again, and it detected the switch and shows the empty directory on disk 2. So you probably saw it in the video, but I actually soldered the wire from the SD, the swap disk signal, <laughs> to the wrong pad for pin 2. I also measured pin 2 wrongly. I thought it was pin 2 from the left, but it's pin 1 from the left. Pin 2 is pin 2 from the bottom. So <laughs> that was my confusion, but now it works. Anyway, I think that's going to be enough with the testing of this drive. I'm now going to assemble it with my 3D printed parts just to finish it all off and see how it actually looks. So the drive comes together using this base plate here. This is just to, to keep the drive in the correct position. And if you have a special drive, then you might have to modify uh, this base plate, but this one was actually designed for this particular drive. Um, yeah, but it might also fit uh, the Panasonic drive. This seems to be the same size, I mean. So this one will be screwed on the uh, underside of the drive and then placed into the the case and then there's screw holes down here that fits so now this should fit perfectly just hold it there yeah that goes in uh, however this um, eject button doesn't fit and that's one thing I need to do I need to print an eject button for this Samsung drive so here you see it so this is gonna print pretty fast I think Nothing special with this, uh, just need a little bit of uh, support material under here. So this is going down there. So the PCB have some uh, mounting holes, so you just yeah, find the correct position. The, the holes are a little bit bigger than the screw holes uh, on the case, so you have a little room for adjustment. Now to find screws for um, this base plate and the drive itself, it's a little bit difficult. I found these because they have to be a little bit long. And these are maybe long enough, but uh, that's not regular machine screws, so I don't think they fit very well. But you also need some um, screws that goes down to through these mounting poles here that needs to be small enough to fit this does not fit this one fits yeah but that one is maybe too long but maybe these are better because these are some kind of self threading screws yeah this can go there okay so this fit fine there unfortunately i never saw someone selling uh, <laughs> The correct screws for this um, build but um, yeah if you have a, a, a good hardware shop nearby you're probably gonna find the correct ones but uh, yeah this might be a little bit more difficult than you uh, initially thought these screws have a little bit thick rounded head so they're not going all the way down hopefully that's not gonna be an issue For the PCB, I think these are gonna fit. These are actually some screws I bought for, um, yeah, I think it's for the Amiga case or the Commodore 64 case. Uh, these are self tapping, I'm gonna test. They can't be too big or else they'll break the plastic, but this one actually fits. Just gonna push uh, the PCB all the way back so it's flush with the back wall. Not really sure about the dimensions of these screws, but... Uh... Oh no, 
they're just a little bit too long they are protruding uh, out here one millimeter however i have a fix for that i have these uh, rubber uh, feet i was gonna place some there anyway but uh, i could just place them right over the screw would probably have done that anyway then I just push it in and it will go into the screw and stay there yeah yeah that looks good board is now secured into its case now just one little thing before i close this up obviously i need to mark it and uh, yeah since there's nothing there only room for uh, some not necessary resistors this fits perfectly <laughs> nice the new part uh, for the jack button is finished just gonna take off this one how do you do that yeah just push it up and then this one goes same way down okay well it's a little loose way too loose i'm not really sure why but uh, but when it comes into the case maybe that doesn't matter or i'll use some uh, glue on it i could of course adjust the uh, model a little bit but uh, i think i just glue it in place yeah it's a little bit loose but it doesn't go anywhere so let's insert the disc yeah I'm going to use a little bit of um, hot glue anyway, just to keep it uh, a little bit still. So I just need to be a little bit quick here uh, to place this part. I need to rehearse it. Yeah, I'm going to go up there and yeah, like that. <laughs> okay, so hot glue is going in. Yeah, I think that went fairly okay. Um, yeah, it's keeping itself in place there. So now the drive finally can go into its uh, home, new home. And that fits perfectly. There's a couple of millimeters uh, leeway here, but um, that's not an issue. Now I can try and use these screws here. Hopefully they're not too long, so that they will come out on the other side. Mm, I'm just going to feel. Okay, they're too long. I just feel it. Yeah. I need to find some other screws. A couple of millimeters too long. Let's see. These. Yeah. A little bit shorter I'm not really sure if I have four of those it says C64 and uh, yeah there's actually four so these seem to be the correct ones so let's uh, try yeah that's perfect nice so they felt a little bit loose. I didn't want to turn uh, the screw hard, but um, it's now sitting here stable. And I think maybe the screw should have been one millimeter thicker or a half millimeter thicker. You could of course just fill some glue or some epoxy inside the hole first. Uh, that will keep it there. I was worried about the capacitors being too tall, but uh, as you can see, there's no issue with that at all. So. Just gonna raise them up and uh, yeah. So let's hook this up and I wonder why um, why they made it so that you have to turn the cable because uh, you actually have to do that. Um, if this one was the other way around or this one the other way around, it would fit without turning, but now you have to do like this. And if you have a long cable, then you might have trouble putting it down here into the compartment yeah it probably was like that from the original drive 
Hopefully this cable won't mind being a little bit bent. I was discussing using the alternate power supply. Um, for now I'm gonna leave it unused. Uh, for one I need a bigger heatsink or I was also thinking about replacing the 7805 um, voltage regulator with uh, one of those uh, that runs cool. But I don't have one uh, right here. And I actually bought another power supply. So I actually have one there now. This is an original uh, 1541 power supply I got from uh, Germany and uh, I haven't tested it, but I'm um, gonna try this out later. So using the original power supply. All right then, how does the top lid fit? Okay. Yeah, that fits very nicely. So this is a very good 3D model and it printed very well. Now, the final two screws. I can probably use these black ones here. They are a little bit long, but uh, the screw mounts on the back side there is very long. So there's no danger it going out and hitting something. So let's see if this will grip. Yeah, it's going down. <laughs> Yeah, now it's gripping. Yeah, that's perfect. Don't want to turn it too hard or else it will rip out the plastic. Yeah, same there. There it took. Nice. Yoohoo, look at that. All right, the build is finished. Looking good. Haha, <laughs> perfect fit. Now there's one thing missing, it's the badge. I have the badge. Just gonna clean off a little bit so there's no fat or dust or dirt there with some uh, alcohol. Then we have the badges from the badge man. Now comes the hard part. Fitting this correctly without uh, doing it wrong. Oh, it seems to be a little bit big. Just need to get it all the way into the corner. Yeah, as you can see, it's a little bit too wide or maybe you can't see it, but I see it. So I'm not sure if that's uh, the fault of uh, the badge or the 3D model, but uh, yeah, I'll try and adjust it and uh, or cut a little bit. Just need to cut a little bit from that edge. You can't get everything perfect every time, can you? Yeah, that looks fine. Nice. I need one more badge though. How about this? Is it a little bit too much or is it cool? You'll be the judge. Should I have this badge Arctic Retro or should I not? <laughs> I mean, I can decide for myself. Just want to hear what you think. Is this ruining the authenticity or is it okay to say who built this? It's not 100% aligned, but yeah, that's okay. It's homemade. Alrighty, it's finished. <laughs> but I'm actually going to get a couple of these LEDs in the mail tomorrow. So then I will install them and then you'll get to see that in a few seconds by video editing magic. Oops. <laughs> I mean, this drive, it has this lid that keeps the disc from flying out that fast, but yeah, <laughs> that's not a big deal. But the fit and finish is very nice, don't you think? So we're using uh, tweezers. You can actually reach it and uh, adjust those uh, dip switches. So for the alternate power, I was actually thinking about uh, just uh, drilling a hole here and uh, mounting uh, just a regular barrel jack contact there. Okay, so it's been a couple of days and today is the 28th 
of uh, February 2024 and uh, yeah I got the LEDs I got the red green yellow and blue so I wonder which colors I'm gonna use on this of course they're gonna be here maybe I should uh, go for a blue one if it's gonna be powerful enough we'll see and also I got the package from PCB way yay and this is the 3D printed case I ordered from PCB Way, so I'm really excited to see if this is any better than the one I printed myself. But before I take a look at the case, I'm gonna um, assemble the LEDs, and obviously I need to open this drive up again then. If you remember, there's those um, contacts there. I soldered in three pin headers and there's one common for uh, both LEDs. So I'm just gonna make a little cable for that. So let's see if we can find something here. Yeah, these are, this is the correct. And yeah, just gonna make a three-way cable for this now. That's the cable. Uh, so originally there is a little PCB that holds uh, the two uh, uh, LEDs. Um, but uh, I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to yeah, put them into the holes and uh, use a little glue around just to secure them. That was the little cable. Let's see if it works. Yeah, the blue is very bright, the yellow is a little bit dimmer. Uh, of course, you could adjust that with adding a little resistor, but um, nah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> this is fine. Okay, so now I'm just going to feed that through uh, the holes. Uh, I made a little too long cable here, but uh, I think that's okay. I don't remember what uh, LED is on all the time. Is it the top or the bottom one? I'm gambling that the top one is on and uh, that's the the blue one. So yeah, hopefully this fits through the holes. Yeah, I think they do. So I'm using a little bit epoxy glue here uh, just to make it uh, sit very well inside. So. I mean that hot glue it's uh, not very good it uh, doesn't uh, bond very well only problem this takes uh, some time for it to cure so I need to sit here and hold this <laughs> all right so the LEDs are now stuck pretty well there uh, can't be moved and yeah not perfectly placed into the holes. The blue one is a little askew, but uh, that doesn't matter. Okay, let's turn it on now and see it in action. Yeah, <laughs> nice. So then I'm ready for the final assembly. However, let's take a look at uh, this one. I got the 3D printed case for it from PCB Way. Let's open it up and see if it's any better than the one I made myself. All right, so there's some 3D parts in here. Very nicely packaged. All the parts I need for the 1581 floppy disk drive. And they look amazing. I mean, I will study them, but uh, the quality looks uh, just fantastic in uh, white. Yeah, they have sponsored me with all this, but I ordered more than I actually need. So um, this can come handy some later time where if and when I build me another one. Let's uh, study the quality a little bit closer. I don't know how it shows on the video, but uh, yeah, it's white, so it's not that easy to see, but the quality, it looks amazing. I mean, take a look at this. It's uh, yeah, a little bit uneven here. Is probably where uh, the support material was. So as you can see, they have removed uh, all the support material uh, for me. And uh, yeah, the big, uh, large surfaces, they are very smooth and even. So yeah, the holes are even. So this looks to be very nice quality, even 
much better than I produce myself. But what kind of plastic and quality they actually use, I'm not really sure. But it uh, feels sturdy and hard. And I cannot see anything wrong here. So it looks uh, just perfect. This is the alternative front, which you can use if you have a drive where you need to have the whole uh, front part, the bezel on the actual drive sticking out. There's no Commodore logo on this one, but uh, on this one there's a Commodore logo. That's from the print model and not the actual print. Yeah, so all in all this looks amazing. They have done a very good job removing any support material, if uh, <laughs> there was any. Um, yeah, the only thing I think is a little less perfect is this front here, or this part here. But I mean, that's very minor, I think. So let's compare now. Now this um, new part should fit onto this I printed myself. Because it's the exact same um, model that has been used. Yes, look at that. That fits perfectly. So the top part now, the new part from PCBWay, is a little bit more smooth than uh, the one I printed. Uh, there's a little bit of a sharp edge around it, but that I can easily just uh, sand away or uh, use a little knife or something just to cut that away. But it looks amazing. And uh, yeah, what do you think? Should I myself on my drive go with uh, the white from PCB Way or the little grayish one I printed myself? Not really sure. So again, thanks a lot to my sponsor PCB Way for giving me this uh, print and uh, the actual uh, motherboard before. I really appreciate it. I also got uh, no less than three different uh, drive support uh, plates. I think it was um, this one I printed, not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is still my print. I have now assembled the drive again and uh, yeah, I think that's going to be it. I was planning about uh, modifying it to use that alternate uh, power supply, but um, I need to get a new voltage regulator or um, a bigger uh, heatsink. Um, so I'm going to wait with that. Anyway, my plan was to install a contact like this. Just gonna drill a hole here and um, mount this there, and then I can make a power supply or buy one with the correct voltage that goes into that. That's gonna be sometime later, not in this video. So then it's gonna be a little bit more uh, testing of this drive and gonna see if I can find some games or something and uh, geos or something and test out, but I need to produce those uh, floppy disks before. So that's something I'm gonna do on my own. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think there's no more room for uh, any more in this video series. So I think I'm gonna stop here. All right, that was it for this video. I think this was a great uh, build and uh, yeah, it went smooth for the most part. A couple of mistakes here and there, but that's uh, normal, I guess. <laughs> as long as uh, I figure it out, I'm pleased. So my plans next is to use that other case from PCB Way and build another of these drives because I have uh, most of the parts and I have, I have an external drive that works with it and uh, everything so it's not a lot of uh, extra work to build a second one so i'm not gonna make a video about that because now you have seen it so i think that's enough i might come back to this drive a little bit later testing it out with uh, some uh, yeah, games and uh, yeah, disc tools or anything that can uh, be utilized on this drive we'll see and that's gonna be another video sometime later Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this series and uh, thanks a lot for uh, watching and thanks for the subscribes and the likes and a special thanks to my patrons. Uh, see you. Bye bye.